Good morning, Bucknutters. It is Thursday, November 4th, 2021. I am Dan Rubin. This is the Bucknuts Morning 5 and Change. If it's Thursday, that can mean only one thing. Steve Wolfong, Director of Recruiting for 24-7 Sports, joins us. Steve, the sun is actually shining in the Gem City for the first time in a few days. I hope it's doing so in the state capital of Indiana. Of course it is. It starts here and we send it down I-70 through Dayton all the way to Columbus. But there was a frost on the ground this morning. Fall is here. It's playoff time. You're either a contender or a pretender. We're going to find out here over the next four months, four weeks. We're certainly going to find that out. We're also going to find out today what Steve thinks of the class of 2022 for Ohio State with another edition of... The in and out game. Very complicated. I will give Steve a name. An Ohio State target based on the current Ohio State targets list on the site. Listed in order of composite ranking. Now, this does not mean everything is etched in stone. It means as of right now, Steve Wolfong put on the spot. Is this guy in or out for the class of 2022? Then we'll take a break, talk a little playoffs, talk a little Huskers. We will start with defensive end Shamar Stewart. Out. I think that he's going to go to Texas A&M and George is the biggest challenger. Texas defensive end Omari Abor. In, uh, but they'll have to keep pushing. You know, I think coming off a of, Visit to Ohio State for the Penn State game. His dad told me that the Buckeyes are the leader. So I like where Ohio State stands right now. And we'll see if they can get it to the finish line. Love recruiting Texas. Offensive lineman, Keonta Goodwin. Out. Um, I think that right now, Alabama is the biggest challenger to flip him from Kentucky. Michigan State's in there. Going to take an official to Michigan. He did tell me this week that he was still trying to set up an official visit to Ohio State for the 20th, so we'll see if that comes to fruition. Defensive end, Eni White. Out. I think he's going to Texas A&M. Wait, Texas A&M was really – this has got to be the best they've recruited since I've been in the game. They have a lot of mojo right now, but they got to get it to the finish line too now. Safety, Xavier Wampa. No clue. Not playing the game on Wampa. My crystal ball is on Ohio State, but I still think he could go to Notre Dame or Iowa. I don't know what the young man is thinking. I know that it's been a tough decision, um, and he likes all three. Do you think Iowa, kind of going the way of Iowa, has helped? You know, I'm not sure. I actually, uh, you know, I haven't talked to the family since right after the Ohio State game, so I don't know what the I don't have any additional intel right now other than, you know, all three trips were, were big and made the decision even harder for Xavier going into December 8th. That's his announced date, correct? Correct. Seriously anticipating that one. All right, another safety. They hung together this past weekend. Zion Branch. I have him in. My crystal ball's on Ohio State for him, and I think the Buckeyes have led for a lot of the process. You know, I think that they continue to evaluate other programs and there's reasons to like Clemson. And, and, and you know, I think USC certainly always been a factor in a school that's been on the radar well even before he was a, a, a recruit. But I just like where Ohio State stands for Zion Branch. They've done a terrific job recruiting him. And um, it's, a, it's a school that he's always been high on. Do you know if Zachariah Branch, his younger brother and a big-time wide receiver prospect who was also here, did he enjoy his visit? Yeah, absolutely. I think there's a really good chance they go to the same school. Um, I think that that's something that they want. And obviously, he's a top target for Ohio State alongside Carnell Tate. Ohio State can land. They're battling Notre Dame for Carnell Tate. But if, if Ohio State can land 
Zachariah and Carnell Tate, I think, that should be good with that and shut it down. Offensive lineman, Ernest Green. Out. I think he goes to Georgia right now, um, but Ohio State's in that one in Texas and some others. I heard a statistic about Georgia's five stars. Georgia has more five stars on its team now than the Big 12 and the Pac-12 combined. That is nuts. Is that not the case for like Alabama and Ohio State too? It may be, but I hadn't heard the statistic and it was overwhelming. It's something like the SEC has 59 five stars and the Big 10 is second with 29. And how many of those are on Ohio State? So let's not talk SEC here. Let's talk Devin Brown, quarterback. If you haven't checked him out recently, he's committed to USC. Mark Porter did an awesome video review of him for those who had a chance to check it out. Your thoughts? Out. I don't. When's his, you know, we'll see what happens, I guess. But right now, out. He's got to get to campus and all of that. I think that when he was offered by Ohio State, there was a great deal of intrigue. We'll see where it goes. But I got him out right now. Speaking of out. I think you're going to say that to Cam Dewberry. Yeah, out. I, I don't know where he's going to go, but I don't think it's Ohio State right now. Much more optimistic about your fellow state resident, Caden Curry. Yeah, I'll put Caden Curry in. I think he had another great, great visit to Ohio State, been there three times now. No program has recruited him harder. Ohio State's been on Caden Curry for as long as just about anybody outside of the Indiana Hoosiers. And I think he had a terrific experience for the Penn State game. I know he told me that he's excited to compare it to his weekend at Alabama this weekend. So we'll see how it goes in Tuscaloosa. Another very interesting name, Hero Canoe. So I think out. Uh, Oklahoma was the leader coming into the visit. Um, But I do think that Ohio State is one that he's always been super high on. I haven't been able to nail down if the tide has changed in that, if the tide has turned in that recruitment. I mean, he's at Georgia this weekend, so we'll see how that goes. I don't think he's going to Notre Dame, which got an official visit as well. These guys are less likely. Defensive tackle, Kristen Miller. Out. Georgia, Alabama. Offensive lineman, Carson Hinsman. In maybe they're battling Wisconsin. They 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 got a good shot at Carson Hensman. Another offensive lineman, this time an Ohio native, Emil Wagner. Out. Probably Kentucky, maybe Penn State or Notre Dame. And we will finish with this Medina quarterback, Drew Aller. Out. If James Franklin and Mike Yersich are residing in Happy Valley next year, I believe Drew Aller will too. If you're scoring at home. In, Amari Abor, Zion Branch, Caden Curry, in Ish, Carson Hinsman, Xavier Wampa. Again, nothing etched in stone, just to give you a sense of where we're at. We're going to take a quick break, come back, and talk college football playoff and the Huskers. All right, we are back. Steve, I am morally obligated to ask you what you thought of the initial college football rankings released on Tuesday night. For those in hibernation, number one, Georgia, number two, Alabama, number three, Michigan State, number four, Oregon. What's your vibe? And if you could relate it to the Buckeyes, that would always help. I don't hate them. You know, Michigan State at number three, if that's legit, it'll work itself out, right? They got, they're going to have to come on the road and beat the Buckeyes. Ohio State controls its own destiny, in my opinion, because the way it's set up right now, even if Oregon wins out and Ohio State beats Michigan State, you know you're looking at the teams that are, you know, they're both they're both going to get in, in my opinion, um, based on the way it looks. Although, I mean, Oklahoma's undefeated, probably the one they're, they're probably the ranking I didn't like the most of the way it came out. If they would have put them in the top four, I wouldn't have been that. I wouldn't have been mad. You know, yeah, they so. punished them though because they had zero points at halftime against Kansas with the new quarterback. No, I get it. I get it. It's but it's hard as hell to win, man. And and but yeah, I'm not mad at this this scenario. You know, I think because I'm always who do I think would win? That's the way it should be ranked. So I think Ohio State would win against Michigan State, but I'm not mad that Michigan State's ahead of them. They're undefeated, and they're going to play, so that'll work itself out anyway. Oregon beat Ohio State, so it doesn't matter how you slice it the rest of the way. If Ohio State wins every, if Oregon wins every game by one point the rest of the way and looks 
terrible doing it. My opinion, they still came to Columbus and won inside the shoe, but um, Oregon and, and, and Ohio State control their own destiny, in my opinion. And so if you're the Buckeyes, that's awesome. And, and maybe you get a chance to play Oregon again or, or, or what, you know. Very confident that if Ohio State wins out, they're going to go. I actually think the argument's going to end up being between, if they win out, Oregon and Oklahoma. You've got the winner of the Alabama-Georgia game is going. So you believe that the committee will eventually leap Ohio State over Oregon? Oh, without question. If they win out, you're... yeah, they will. Because they're only one spot behind them now. But, or, but if Oregon, in your theory, Oregon's winning out also. Correct. And so I kind of disagree with that. I, I'm not, not saying that. This is what I think the, the committee is going to do. If you are one spot behind and you play three teams better than the team in front of you, including one that's ranked ahead of that team, their body of work is going to not even be comparable. That's why I'm saying they're going to compare Oklahoma to Oregon when it comes right down to it. There is no way a one-loss Big Ten champ with wins over everyone in the league is not going. I agree with you. I just think that Oklahoma would be left out is what I'm saying based on the way they have it set okay. up now. In your theory, that means Oregon's winning out too. That right. means Oregon would have a win over Ohio State. I think Oregon would be in the three spot. Ohio State will be in the two spot because don't forget the top two teams, one of them is going to get at least dropped, right? I mean, I guess if Alabama beats Georgia, Georgia's going still. I get that. But they wouldn't be the number one seed or number two seed. Right. You just know Georgia wants to beat Bama in the SEC title game and and, and take care of them because they don't want to have to play them again. I'm wondering if if Michigan State is not going to get upset in the next couple weeks. I don't think Maryland could do it. I don't really think Purdue could do it. But What we know about Purdue is that they're dangerous in the sense that they have three or four wideouts that can really run and make plays, and David Bell is incredible. So on any given day – they have a chance to hit some big plays against you. And then they do have some difference makers on defense, Carlaftis being the one that you got to really account for. So Stud. although I wouldn't pick Purdue to I wouldn't pick Purdue to beat Michigan State, I wouldn't pick Purdue to beat Ohio State. They have some personnel that could be a real problem and and you could get into a slobber knocker with them and, and lose. They kicked Iowa's ass. They really played Notre Dame pretty tough, and David Bell got hurt late in that game. If David Bell's still in that game, maybe he hits a big play, and Notre Dame's in trouble, you know. And and so um, they they played some people valiantly, and then they you know they lost to Minnesota in a monsoon. That was a tough one for them, but Purdue's pretty good. They're, they're, you got to show up against the Boilers this year. Yeah, the Iowa game, now in retrospect, Iowa is not thought of the same way, but that was not a fluke. They beat them. I watched that game. They could not stop David Bell. Like, they had no answer for him. And he's a stud. He is a guy who had an Ohio State offer, which is unbiased. I give guys a lot of credit in terms of how good I think they are if they've gotten an Ohio State offer. So we shall see. Ohio State is a 15-point favorite at the Fighting Scott Frost this weekend. I'm assuming you're going to pick the Buckeyes. Well, I picked the Buckeyes. When have I not? Pick them every time. Except I, maybe I didn't pick them in the title game last year, if you ask me. But I always pick them in the Big Ten. I'll say this about Nebraska. Every game's been close. They lost by three to Michigan. I think Michigan's a pretty good team. They lost by seven to Michigan State. I think Michigan State's a pretty good team. They lost by seven to Oklahoma. I think Oklahoma's a good team. So uh, Nebraska's playing hard. They just can't get over the hump. You know, Purdue just beat them by five. They lost by seven to Minnesota. Every game they played has just been probably deflating to go into the locker room afterwards and be close and not win any of them. So uh, they did destroy Northwestern 56 to seven. They have some capable players. They're playing hard. They're just not winning. Um, You know, I I would expect Ohio State to uh, win convincingly. But if they don't, just rest on the fact that Nebraska's played everybody tough and just not not tough enough. This is actually my biggest gripe with the college football playoff. Penn State is not ranked in the top 25 of the uh, playoff rankings. I get that. Michigan State is number three. If Penn State played Michigan State on a neutral field right now, who would you pick? 
I mean, I like Penn State. I think that they're good. I think they're legit. I don't know what the hell happened against Illinois. I have no explanation. I was at my kid's baseball uh, a fundraiser event or whatever it was, so I didn't even watch the game. I can't fathom how they lost. They would have beat Iowa with four or five turnovers if Sean Clifford plays the whole game. Uh, I'm not saying they're the perfect football team, but they got good players. They play hard. They're physical as hell on defense. They got some good running backs. I, I mean, they, you know, they're they're not a perfect football team, but they're very dangerous, as you guys know. Um, Who would you pick? And uh, um, I would pick, I pick Penn, Penn State. State. I think you know, but hey, it's gonna get hey that game's gonna get played. So again, you know, we'll we'll get to see. They're gonna play each other, and Penn State's gonna play Michigan. Penn State's got a lot to uh, play for in November. So we'll see how they rally. You know, they rallied in November last year uh, after a terrible start to the season. They could have mailed it in and they rallied and won. I think they won out. Um, But Maryland, Michigan, Rutgers, Michigan State, those are all, you know, Maryland and Rutgers are big games for them for the recruiting footprint that they live in. And then Michigan and Michigan State are potential top 10 opponents for them. They have a lot to play for in November, and we'll see if they back up the words that we just said on this podcast. I'm just saying, if you come out with the rankings and number three versus unranked on a neutral field to pick them, I'm not sure about those rankings. We appreciate Steve stopping by. Have a good one, Bucknutters. Take care, y'all. See you on the front row.